Okay, finishing up Article 300, General Requirements for Wiring Methods and Materials, we have a new section 300.26, Classification of Remote Control and Signaling Circuits, that was added to help clarify the applicability of Article 300. Now, we did a lot of moving and shaking in Chapter 7 in the 2023, and I think we talked about that at the very first of this series where we talked about some of the new articles. So in Chapter 7, we revised Article 725. Article 725 used to talk about Class 1, Class 2, and Class 3 remote control and signaling circuits. Now, Class 2 and Class 3 are almost the exact same thing. They're both considered safe from a, uh, from a fire initiation perspective, and they're both considered safe enough from an electric shock perspective. Uh, it's kind of like if you have a if you have a garage door opener circuit, right? Not the power circuit, but the push button circuit. If you were to take those two wires and, and arc them together, eh, there's not enough power there to create a fire, and there's not enough voltage to drive enough current to kill you. So they're considered safe, right? So you can splice them in the open air with some twist on wire connectors. Class two and class three are more or less treated the exact same because they're safe enough. Class one circuits are a whole different ball game. And maybe we should have always had them in different articles, but we can only fix what we can fix. So in the 2023, they did a really good change in my opinion, and they separated class two and class three in article 725, and class one into article 724. The other thing that they did though, is they deleted non-power limited class one circuits. So the class one circuits that we have in Article 724 now are only power limited class one circuits. And, and we're going to see why that's really important to understand because it, it almost takes Article 724 out of the code book. So uh, 300.26 says remote control or signaling circuits must be classified as one of the following. All right, so here I've got this power source, this uh, LED driver. And it says the rated power is 12 watts, <laughs> not much. And that's a class two circuit, safe enough from fire, safe enough from electric shock. So that's gonna be class two, article 725. 300.26, item one, says class one, power limited signaling and remote control circuits must comply with 724.3. All right, so a class one circuit is a circuit that does not fall within the voltage and current limitations of class two and class three. Now, again, usually with class one, it's not a power limited circuit. A class one remote control signaling circuit would often be like a 120 volt circuit that we're using for control on a 480 or a 4160 volt motor. You know, usually when we get into big motors like that, now we're not really controlling them with a little doorbell, you know, size transformer and, and push buttons. We're usually using a 120 volt control circuit. That would be a class one non-power limited circuit in previous versions of the code. What's special about a class one non-power limited? Not much. You, you gotta wire it just like it's 120 volts because it usually is. So you're not using thermostat wire. You're not using cat six twisted, you know, twisted pair cables. You're using THHN and, and pipe EMT. So why do we even have a class one non-power limited circuit if you just have to follow the rules in chapter three? Well, in the 2023 code, we, we scrapped the whole idea. There is no class one non-power limited. So you treat a class one non-power limited circuit just like a, a circuit for lighting and power. Nothing special about it. So we don't even have, the, the, the phrase class one non-power limited does not even exist in the 2023. So if you have that, then you just follow the general rules. If you actually have a class one power limited remote control signaling circuit, then you're gonna go to article 724. But here's the thing, where, where I recommend you start is 724.40 because that places the power limitations on what a class one power source can be. Because the circuit classification, class one, class two, or class three, it's determined by the power source, all right? If you have a doorbell transformer, it's going to say right on it, it's gonna say class two, which means of course that it's a class two circuit. So if your control circuit 
uses such little power that it can be provided by a class two source, then it's a class two circuit. And a class three circuit has just barely, and I mean barely, a little bit more power than class two. So if you have a class three, it's class three. If you have a low voltage remote control signaling circuit and it's 30 volts or less, but it's more power than a class two or class three can provide, then you're going to look and see, okay, does it fall under the power limitations of 724.40? And if you read 724.40, it's going to say, look, ultimately, 30 volts, 2,500 volt amps, two and a half kVA. But if you read it carefully, it's usually 30 volts and one kVA, 1,000 VA. Here's the thing, stop and, and scratch your head for a minute. When's the last time you saw a power source that was 30, less than, you know, 30 volts or less and one kVA or less and was not listed as class two or class three? Usually if you have something that's that low power, it's gonna be class two or class three. But if you have something that's, you know, 750 volt amps, that might be a class one remote control circuit. 300.26 also says item two, class two or class three power limited signaling and remote control circuits comply with 725.3. So here on the garage door opener, it actually says right there where I have it circled, NEC class two. That thing is a class two power source. So you're gonna use class two wiring methods and materials. You're gonna to go to article 725. And then as I mentioned, non-power limited signaling or remote control circuits just comply with the general rules of Article 300. So here I've got, you know, what, what I think we would all agree is a pretty small transformer, 5 kVA. That is way bigger than the allowances for a class one power limited circuit. So Article 724, yes, it exists. I don't think it's gonna be used very often. Usually you're going to be beyond those voltage and current limitations. So there you have it, that's 300.26.